All right, let's go ahead and go through the elastic collision problem real quick here. Hopefully you had a, um, a decently easy enough time with it. Uh, I know the first time around it uh, it, it will be difficult, so um, let's take a look at it and uh, correct any mis mistakes, misconceptions that you may have. All right, so we want to we wanna be able to, even before going through the questions, take a look at what's actually going on here. So it looks like, to begin with, I've got a couple of objects because this is zero seconds right here and both my objects are apart. Right? I don't have you know cart one and, and cart two. They're not sitting on top of each other or anything like that like they were with the explosions. Okay, so I've got two separate carts. I also know that they're apart from one another because I've got one of them going in the positive direction the other one's going in the negative direction. So they, they are moving at this point. If they're not moving um, with the exact same velocity, exact same sign, then I know that they're, that they're apart from each other. Okay, so before the collision, it looks like cart one and cart one, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and highlight here real quick with, a, uh, with the, the blue highlighter so we can talk about The blue versus the red cart, maybe that might be a little bit easier than talking about the cart one versus cart two, or trying to figure out what what the triangle is versus the circle is. I don't really like how that's notated. Um, but in your packets, obviously, we can't we can't put it in color. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what's going on here. So with our with our red cart or cart two. We, we know that the velocity hasn't changed very much with the blue cart or cart one. We know that the velocity has changed quite a bit. So does that does that help us out with anything? Um, let's let's see what else do we know? Um, we know that to begin with, cart one isn't going in the positive direction to end with it's in the negative direction. We also know for cart two, to begin with it's in that negative direction to end with it's in the positive direction. All right, well, will that help us out with anything? We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and see there as well. Okay. So to begin with, let's go ahead and um, describe the motion. All right, so cart one, we're at five meters per second, constant. All of a sudden, it looks like we have a collision that takes place because something has caused this momentum to change in some way. And then to end with, Looks like we are we're going in the opposite direction. So it looks like, just judging by cart one alone, that we had some sort of bouncy collision happen here, or an elastic collision. For cart two, it looks like the opposite's true. We were going in the opposite direction from cart one. We we're moving, and then it looks like we collided here with something. We changed motion somehow. And then we ended up going in the, the opposite direction that it was originally going in. So now it's going in the positive direction. So there must have been some sort of collision that took place between these two carts. Um, aside from just realizing, okay, well, it's obviously going to be a collision between the two carts because that's what we're talking about. We should also be able to spot it by saying, all right, well, in the negative direction here, positive direction here, and then all of a sudden I switch. So they, they must have bounced off one another. So it would essentially be like um, cart two, so our red one is going this direction, if that's our, our little cart, and then cart one is going in this direction. So that would be the before case scenario. They would end up coming towards each other, colliding, and then cart one would, after the collision, go the opposite direction. Cart two would also go the opposite of its original direction. So we're just talking about, in this case, the positive looks like that must have been going in, in this direction. Right. Same deal with the, the red cart. Going to the right here is, is our positive direction. Going to our left is our negative direction. And again, that's arbitrary. Somebody else could have said, hey, I want this to be my negative and this to be my positive. As long as you keep it 
straighten your own mind throughout the entire problem, you're good. You just don't want to switch up your positives and your negatives halfway through the problem. That wouldn't, uh, obviously wouldn't be a good thing. Okay, so there's the uh, motion of the cards before the collision as well as after the collision. Um, if we look at the masses based on the velocity, uh, what's, what's going on with our mass? Well, it looks like cart one, it changed quite a bit. Right, I'm, I've got, I'm going at 5 meters per second to begin with, and I'm going at negative 6 meters per second. Right now, I'm just concerned that there's this huge change. It's a really, really big change, right? For cart 2, I'm going at negative 3 meters per second, which really means 3 meters per second, but in the opposite direction um, as the other cart. And then I'm going... It looks like a little over two, maybe not quite three over here. So from here to here, not that big of a change in comparison to cart one. Well, if I didn't change my velocity very much, that means that it must be fairly hard to get this thing to move, to get it to change direction. If it's hard to get it to change direction, it must be fairly massive. So cart two would be the more massive cart. Cart 1, on the other hand, looks like it's pretty easy to get it to change direction, at least in comparison to Cart 2, but it's pretty pretty easy to get it to change direction because uh, it, it changes quite a bit. So it must be easy to move. If something's easy to move, it must not have that much of a mass in comparison to this, this other cart that had a bigger mass. So we can say safely say that Cart 1, or our blue cart here, it uh, is less massive. Cart 2 is more massive. And again, it's based on the motion change. Even though it doesn't tell me anything about mass on here in terms of a number, at least I can infer it based on my, based on my velocity. Because again, a momentum is based on mass and velocity. We're assuming our masses um, from Cart 1 in the beginning to Cart 1 in the end is going to be the same. Cart 2 from its beginning to its end is going to be the same relative to itself. It would make it wouldn't make too much sense to say oh, all of a sudden it, it switched its mass part way through. All right. Um, in terms of the time that the collision took place, um, we would say right here is the beginning of our collision. Right here is the end of our collision. Um, Draw it in a, maybe a, a pen here instead. So again, that's the beginning. That's the end. Now I know with the explosion, it's like it started at a dot, but that's because these two were to be, uh, together to begin with with the explosion. With the elastic collision, we've got two things, two carts that are separate. Then they change their speed, start changing their direction at those points. So that must be where they first started um, first started colliding, and then they ended their collision over here when they equalized back out again and, and started going to constant speed. So again, between these two points, this is this is where we would actually be able to find what our, our, our impulse is. If we knew the force, we also know the time here, so we could figure out an impulse, which is the thing that causes our momentum to change. All right? I know we did it on the last graph, but just as a uh, just as a review, not a bad idea. Okay, um, so then what can we say about the momentum from the beginning to the end? Well, to begin with, it looks like my my velocities had a difference of whatever that is to end with. It looks like the velocities of our carts are the same interval. So if if our velocity from the beginning and our velocity in the end was the same, we can actually assume that our momentum remained the same. And here's why: because it's not it's not only about velocity. We can also assume that whatever mass this cart has, again, it's going to have that same mass to the end with. Same deal with cart one. Whatever mass it has here, it's going to have that same mass to be uh, to end with as well. So that means if my mass 
and my velocity both stay constant, well, then I'm going to end up having a, a constant momentum because momentum is mass times velocity. Um, so we can we can also say that cart one it's going five meters per second to begin with. Then to end with, let's not worry about the sign quite yet, but to end with, it's going six meters per second. So it actually increased its speed. Now if we wanted to talk about velocity, we can say that it, it increased its velocity in the opposite direction. Because again, that sign doesn't mean that we're, we're slowing down going into the negative numbers. It means that we're actually increasing our speed because we're going away from zero, but we're actually going in the, the opposite direction of what we were to begin with. The other side of things, um, it, it's a little bit more obvious, I think, when, when we're going away from zero in the positive direction, if we're increasing speed or decreasing speed um, for, for, for whatever reason, we're, we're just more accustomed to seeing things in the positive direction. But nonetheless, we, we do actually have an, an increase in velocity here. All right, so let's take a look at uh, cart two then. So cart two, it's at... I would call this about negative 3 to begin with, right? It looks like it's smack, smack dab in the middle of negative 2 and negative 4. And then to end with, negative 3 would be about right here. So it looks like I'm actually a little bit below 3. So that means that I, um, since I'm a little below 3 and I was at negative 3 here, I actually lost some speed. But I lost some speed going in the in the opposite direction um, as well here. Even though I started in a negative and ended up in a positive, it's still the same sort of theory as starting in the positives and going to the negatives. I'm changing direction, but in this case, I'm lower than 3, so I actually lost a little speed. So that's everything for elastic collisions. Hope that went well for you.